Hey guys, welcome back to another video and happy Thursday. So I hope you had a manageable week so far and are continuing to negotiate those rates per mile up and up and up. As always, at the end of each week, we take a look at the changes in the general freight market as well as the spot market for dry vans, reefers and flatbeds. So let's go ahead and take a look at how the market has changed, what the capacity looks like, what the volumes look like, rejections and diesel prices, and then we'll go into specifics on the spot market as well as the best areas to stick to depending on your equipment type. Ready? Let's go! All right, so as always, we're starting with capacity. And as you can see, this is our capacity map. We can see that for the second week in a row and for the third time this month, we see a net increase in carriers week over week. As of last Friday, we saw an increase of 121 carriers. Personally, I no longer have a comment on this, but I'm sure you guys will have a lot of opinions. Now, in terms of volumes, as we can see here, volumes are holding pretty steady, the white line, and we are above the blue line, which is 2023 levels. And this is calming, to say the least. However, something we should also be maybe a little bit hopeful about is this pattern that we see from 2023. And usually this pattern is similar year over year is that volumes do start to increase starting at the end of April or beginning of May. So maybe, hopefully we will see that again. And at the end of next month, we'll see those volumes start to increase. And it's a good thing too, because rejections this week are just a huge, disappointment if you can see this blue line this is us this is 2023 the light blue line rejections are now below 2023 levels they just fell off a cliff and they are continuing to fall so currently rejections are at 3.39 percent now if we look at diesel prices diesel is continuing to climb up Actually, it increased by one cent week over week on a national level, and currently we're seeing an average of $4.08 per gallon. One of my business partners called me yesterday and said that it's horrific. He cannot find fuel for less than $3.80. Now let's take a look at what's happening with the spot market, starting with dry vans. So on the spot market, dry van loads actually decreased week over week. I know it's hard to see because it's hitting that 2023 level, but there is a slight decrease in the volume available for dry vans. However, did it have a negative effect on rates? Well, it actually did not, which is a nice change. Um, so we can see rates actually went up week over week and they are currently at around $1.87 per mile on average. Now let's take a look at where you need to go if you have a dry van to grab relatively better opportunities. So we have these four maps uh, that I made. These three maps are made using truck stop data, and this is load volumes, then we have capacity and the load to truck ratio on the spot market. This map I made using sonar data where I compare rejections to volumes in each of the market areas and I figure out in which markets are more loads getting pushed to the spot market. We can see in terms of loads, the darker an area, the more loads there are. Texas is on first place for dry vans followed by Georgia, California. Then we have some of the Midwestern and Southern states um, and the Southeast Florida, of course, and the states that have limited volume are the Pacific Northwest. We have the uh, plain states as well, right? These are considered the plain states. In terms of capacity, capacity is highest in Texas. Um, and of course, then followed by California, Georgia, Florida, in the Midwest and the Eastern states. And the least capacity is in the plain states. So of course, the most important thing is the load to truck ratio. So where are there more loads than trucks so that you can get higher rates? For dry vans, Arkansas is the only state that has about two loads per truck. All the orange is about a load per truck. All the red is less than a load per truck 
over capacity. Now let's take a look at this map really quickly, just so that you understand what I'm talking about. Anything that is dark green is where the most amount of loads from the contract market are hitting the spot market. Blue is okay. Yellow is a little bit worse. And finally, red is where very limited volume is hitting the spot market from the rejections by the contract carrier. So now looking at these four maps, we have to kind of put them together to figure out what the better areas are. And what I came up with is California, because there are a ton of loads. There is capacity there as well, but the load to truck ratio is about a load per truck. And in the Ontario and Los Angeles markets is where more loads are hitting the spot market from the contract market. Number two is Arkansas. You can see there are decent amount of loads. There is not a lot of capacity. It's the only state with about two loads per truck already. And there are a few loads hitting the spot market. Finally, we have South Carolina, a good amount of loads, a little bit less capacity. There are a few areas where the loads are hitting the spot market and it's about a load per truck. All right, now let's talk about reefers on the spot market. Volumes also went down, although they are above 2023 levels, which is nice, but they did go down. Now, what about rates? Did we get lucky like with dry vans and rates were not affected? Well, unfortunately, not a chance. <laughs> Reefer rates went down on the spot market week over week and are currently at around $2.21 per mile on a national average, including all types of hauls, short, medium, and long. Now let's take a look at where you need to be with a reefer to grab relatively better opportunities. So again, we have volumes, the darker it is, the more volume, we have capacity, load to truck ratio, and the rejections and volumes. And I'll explain this one again. I know I explained it last time, but I'll just give a little bit of a reminder of why this map looks like this. So in terms of volumes, Texas and California is where it's really at, followed by Illinois, Pennsylvania, New Jersey, Georgia, and Florida, right? Capacity is mostly in Texas, followed by California, Georgia, Florida, some of the Midwestern and Eastern states as well. But the interesting part is the load to truck ratio. And with reefers, there are areas with over three loads per truck, and that is Idaho and Alabama, which surprised me. But North Dakota, South Dakota, and Arkansas have about two loads. All the orange has about one load per truck. The red has less than a load per truck, and it looks like the East Coast, not a good place to be. So now let's take a look at this map showing where these rejections are actually showing up as volume on the spot market, you will see that most of this map is gray. And this is because on sonar, for some reason, a lot of the market areas don't have enough data to report. Or I left them gray because there's almost no volume hitting the spot market. But the places that do have volume hitting the spot market is Dallas and Fort Worth. We have Twin Falls, Idaho, Pendleton, Oregon, Ontario, California, Lakeland, Florida, North Carolina, Illinois, parts of Iowa, South Dakota, and North Dakota as well. So putting all of these four together, I figured that the best areas are California, the Ontario market, because that's where the loads are actually hitting the spot market. There are a ton of loads. There's, I mean, there's a good amount of capacity, but about a load per truck, and there is volume hitting that area. Of course, Idaho, there is a good amount of loads, not a lot of capacity. You can see it's green here and it's over three loads per truck. North and South Dakota are worth checking out just because of how these maps look. Just be careful where you end up. Like Sioux Falls or Fargo might be interesting areas to check out. And then finally, we have Illinois, parts of Illinois, specifically the Joliet, Illinois and the Chicago, Illinois areas that might be interesting. Finally, we have our flat beds and open deck trailers in general, flat beds, step decks. Um, so we can see that volumes on the spot market actually increased quite a bit, and they're quite a bit higher than 2023 levels. However, unfortunately, it did not translate to rates at all, and rates actually slightly 
went down to $2.41 per mile by about a cent week over week. So that's kind of a bummer. But let's take a look at the spot market maps. Unfortunately, I don't have that fancy map with contract to spot basically loads. Um, and that's because, again, Sonar does not provide flatbed data. But in terms of volumes, we can see Texas, California, Alabama, and Georgia are the places where the volume is the highest. California, by the way, I was booking a load today for one of my guys from California, Southern California. And the broker, when I booked the load, he actually asked me, he's like, can you tell me why is it that the rates are so high in California? They're not, I mean, they're not extremely high. They're like $2.20, but to the Midwest, it's starting to pay better. This is something that I did see. He said that on one of his lanes, he paid $1,000 less last week. And this week he won't even get any calls unless he increases his price by $1,000. So quite interesting how quickly the situation changes. Anyway, back to my point. Other than Texas, Alabama, Georgia, and California, you can see that most of the volume is in the Midwest and the South. Now, week over week, Mississippi actually uh, decreased in volume. When we look at capacity, capacity is mostly Alabama, Georgia, Texas, and California. It increased in California, Oregon, and Alabama, and decreased in Missouri. But the most important is the load to truck ratios, and boy, it looks, I, I hate seeing this map because it's so red, but red means less than a load per truck. Um, orange is one load per truck, yellow two loads, and uh, green over three loads per truck. So Mississippi, Alabama are the only places that are green. And week over week, we can see Wyoming got worse. Kentucky, North Carolina actually got better. But one thing I see right away is that the plain states are out of the question when it comes to a destination to consider. Something also to notice is that even though like a place like Pennsylvania has less than a load per truck, on average, there are also ways to decrease capacity just by choosing to haul loads that no one else will, right? So that's how I had a few guys in Pennsylvania today. Um, and that's how we got a good rate per mile is just we chose the loads that no one wanted. I mean, is there anything else I can add other than what I have repeated over and over and over again over the past few months? The general freight market is definitely depressed and not much is changing on the big scale. Yeah, of course, there are some positive movements here, negative movements there. But when we look at the big picture, it's kind of stable bad, right? Maybe getting slightly worse week over week if we take into consideration everything that is going on. But something I am noticing and something you are probably noticing as well is while the general situation is pretty dire, there are some market movements, specific market movements. Some markets are getting better, others are getting worse. And that is exactly how we and our company are surviving right now is by paying attention to which markets are moving in which direction. We strive for the better markets. We pre-book when we can because those better loads usually end up getting grabbed within the first few seconds, very, very early, sometimes a few days before. And when it's necessary, we are patient and wait for that one load that is unlike any other. And all of this extra work, the more driving, the more office time, more OTR time. All of this is just a formula to simply survive, not necessarily make a decent net profit. So is this worth it even? Well, it depends on who you ask and when. For example, me, if you were to ask me yesterday, I would say absolutely not because I was seriously considering quitting this thing for good altogether. I was just done. But today I say that it's worth fighting one more day and reevaluating tomorrow. All I can say to those of us who are still choosing to ride this wave out, we're all either extremely brave or extremely insane. I am on the cuckoo banana spectrum. Anyway, guys, thank you so much for joining me today. Wishing you all a fantastic rest of your week for you all to get amazing long loads to cover Saturday and Sunday. Stay safe, stay healthy, and keep learning. And I will see you in the next video.